brother Paul in 1 Corinthians 1 11 says there are contentions Eris Paul says there are contentions among you what is brother Paul talking about so let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 12 we're going to read to verse 17 pay attention to the reading now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul and I of Apollos and I of Cephas and I of Christ. So in one church you have the you have the Pauline guys in one in one church. In the same church you have the Apollos guys. In one church you have the Cephasian guys. And then in the same church you have the Christocentric brethren. So inside the church there are those that are Christocentric. There are those that are Pauline. There are those that are Cephasian, and there are those that are Apollos guys. So when you say lift up holy hands, the Christocentric brothers will say it was a figure of speech. It's not meant to be literal. <laughs> when you say lift up your voice to God in prayer, the Kephas guys will say the volume is of no relevance. <laughs> when you say let us dance and celebrate the anointing, the Pauline will say there's no dancing in the New Testament. Oh my goodness. In one church. In one church. Now, when somebody reads that verse, his conclusion will be, don't give yourself to any man of God. But they forget that even Christ is in the number. Even Christ. So if you are giving yourself to nobody, it means even Christ. Don't give yourself to Christ. Because some say, I'm for Paul, Apollos, I'm for Christ, I'm for Cephas in the same church. Division in the church at Corinth. What they didn't see is that even Christ was included among the cause for the division. Now, Paul warns about that. Because some people stop there. Don't give yourself to anybody. But why don't you keep reading? Because in Bible teaching, you keep reading. If you keep reading, you will see how brother Paul debunked all of that thinking. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. Pay attention. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. Be followers of us. Huh? Be followers of us. What did Paul say? Be followers of me, even as I also of Christ. Don't follow us. Follow me. Now, he uses the word mimitos or mimites. A word he uses for God once. Ephesians 5.1 Be therefore followers of God as dear children. Imitate. Elsewhere, he uses this for men. 1 Corinthians 4.14 I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, as my, not our, hey, as my beloved sons, I warn you. Next verse. For though you have 10,000 instructors, the word instructors there is babysitters. Babysitters. You can keep your child with babysitters, but you cannot trust babysitters to educate your child. You have had babysitters who kept you waiting for my arrival. So you may have had a thousand babysitters who were watching over you until I came to build you up. Now the person that builds you up becomes your father. Somebody say, Bible say, hey, call no man your father. Look, it just shows you are a bad product of pastoring. Even Jesus called Joseph father. He walked under him. He had a mother. Is it not Jesus, the son of Joseph? So how will Jesus say you shouldn't call anybody your father? You, don't you have a biological father? Don't you call your father father? <laughs> when you read, don't stop. Keep reading. When he said, call no man your father, he was talking about false prophets. And when he said, call no man, he means call none of these false prophets your father. That's what he was talking about in Matthew. What is father? Father is the Greek word for pata. Pata means nourisher. It means source. It means somebody who nourishes you. It means somebody who provides for your spiritual well-being. Father is not title. Father is responsibility. When you call me papa or father or daddy, what I'm hearing is responsibility for your nourishment. And my duty is to feed you and bring ministry out of you. So the person that builds you up and brings ministry out of you becomes your father. Is that clear? That's your father. That's your father. Anybody who is angry that somebody calls somebody a father is because he has never had one. It's because he has never had one. He has all the time operated fatherless. 
And because he's fatherless, he is angry with those who have a father. Brother Paul, I say, I begot you through the gospel. I'm your father. I have begotten you. I have built you up. I have opened your eye to the gospel. I have developed you in Christ. I'm your father. Follow me, not follow us. You will be acting like a bastard. If you have books by Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, and you don't have any of mine, you're a bastard. Those are the attributes of a bastard. It means you don't know your father. It's not an insult. A bastard is a description of a state where somebody doesn't know his father. Am I teaching here? We, we have to put things in perspective, right? I say, is it not right? It's not an insult. It can be used as, as an insult, but it was not designed to be used as an insult. It was designed to describe the state of somebody who has, who has lost, eh? he has lost bearing. So now he doesn't know who his father is. One time, T.D. Jakes is my father. Another time, Creflo Dollar is my father. Another time, T.B. Joshua is my father. Another time, uh, Prophet, uh, Prophet, all those names. That boy is a bastard. It's a total bastard. Brother Paul said, if you have no rebuke, you are a bastard. Is there also in the book of Hebrews? He said, a man that is without rebuke is being treated as a bastard. Is there in the Bible? It's not an insult. It's a definition of a status. I'm teaching good. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not a bastard. I know my father. I know my father's house. I know my brothers. I know my sisters. And you're one of them. I told somebody, we shall glory in the house. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're my brother, you're my sister. We belong to this family. Tell your neighbor, at least I think so. It's left for you to confirm. <laughs> I'm teaching good this afternoon. Look at that first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15 again. Let me zero in some things there. For though you have 10,000 babysitters in Christ, yet have you not many fathers? For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. That's a father. One who begats you through the gospel becomes your father. Next verse. Wherefore, I beseech you, be followers of us. Eh? Be followers of us. Of me as I follow Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. Look at it. 1 Thessalonians 1 6. And you became followers of us and of the Lord. Having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. He said this because of what he said in chapter 2 verse 13 and 14. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God which you heard of us. You received it not as the word of men. But as it is in truth the word of God. Which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Next verse. For you, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For you also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. So the local church is where this discipleship goes on and it happens by following. So Corinth had this challenge. They were having multiple influences. They were hearing from multiple sources without having to boast. Without having to boast by the grace of God. I believe here in Power City, we provide for all you require for spiritual growth. I believe that. Because I made a commitment years ago that just like Paul, anybody a pastor, I must be able to say how I kept back nothing from you that was profitable to you. I made that commitment to the Lord Jesus. So it becomes strange. You are well fed. You are well taught for me to see you parambulating like a bastard. Parambulating around. What are you looking for? What I have taught, I can guarantee you have not even eaten half of it. What are you walking around for? What are you looking for? What did they find? That means you still don't know what you're looking for. And you still don't know what you're looking for. You know? You don't know what you're looking for. With all the food set before you, a buffet of foods across different nations, intercontinental dishes, all plus local dishes, everything set before you, well cooked, well prepared. Then you stand up with your plate and spoon and you wander away looking for mama put. 
The thing that is doing you has no definition. It has, does it have definition? It doesn't have definition. I'm about to close. Paul said, be followers of us. Of the churches. He said, how you have followed us. From house to house. We taught you. And when we are talking about we, we are talking about we and those that we put over you in the local house here. Your house pastors, your district pastors, those who teach you at different levels. We, you followed us. Are you following? We, your campus coordinator, your Bible study center coordinator. We, you have followed us. Acts 20, 20 as a roundup. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house you don't just listen you begin to follow sometimes in listening you release it you release it you release it to what you were taught then you begin to hear it well then you begin to understand it to the point of applying it that is the reason for the local church the local church is not touch and go mm -mm. it's not it's continuity they continued in the apostles doctrine and in prayer so in Corinth, there were multiple influences. Then brother Paul gave them the cure. How they will cure their problem as a church. Follow me. That's the cure. Follow me. You can't be hearing voices. My sheep hear my voice, not my voices. You can't be hearing voices. You should hear a voice that you recognize. A voice that you know. And even in your dream, when that voice talks to you, you know that this is the voice of my shepherd. This is the voice of my father. You should listen to the teachings day and night. Sleep with them. I have come across a lot of people that are not members of this physical church who tell me, look, I sleep, I wake up, it's your message. I'm at work, it's your message. Driving in the car, everywhere you turn around me, it's your message. I was in Ghana last two weeks or so. Last week or so. Last week. And uh, one, of, one, of, one of the ladies who follows me very seriously in Ghana came with her husband to my hotel room for the first time. I've gone to Ghana a number of times in the last two, three years. I've met her. She, she's part of our ministry. But her husband was not part of following us. So she came for the first time with her husband to greet me. She said, my husband has started paying attention to what Christ has done and all that. And then the husband said to me, I'm glad to meet you, sir. My wife sleeps with your voice and wakes up with her voice all the time. She, she doesn't listen to anything else. It's you day and night. That's what I observed. You must be saying something very serious. And then I took time to share a few with him. And I re recommended some teachings for him. Even a man that is not part of our ministry has observed that his wife. This is the voice she listens to all the time. You, <laughs> I don't want to call anything. Let me leave that. In. Let me not say it. <laughs> my sheep hear my voice. Glory to God. Say with me, I am free from multiple influences listen carefully everybody stand up do you know that most of all the letters in the epistles were written to local churches there's no single epistle that was not written to a church none pay attention romans to the church in rome first second corinthians the church at corinth galatia to the church at galatia ephesians for the church in ephesus even though theologians believe that the letter that was written was a general letter that ephesus adopted i will explain later then you know um philippians the church at philippi colossian a letter to the church at Colossae. first and Th second thessalonians a letter to the church at thessalonica all were letters. Philemon was written to Philemon who was at Colossae. Okay. And the name of the pastor is Epaphras. First and second Timothy or Titus were all letters written to the churches. Even the book of Hebrews was to a church. Because Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you. He was talking to a church. James was to a church. Send for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. First and second Peter. First Peter 5, 1 Paul, uh, Peter said, to the elders that are among you. To the elders. So it's a church. Second Peter 1. Peter said fell false prophets also that are among you. So which means it was a letter to a church. First, second and third John. To the elder and elect Gaius in the church. The Jude to the churches. What about Revelation? To the seven churches. So all the letters were to the church. Why? The church is God's idea. The church is God's idea. That is where spiritual growth takes place. Amen. I said amen. So in every letter brother Paul wrote, he wrote instructions, corrections, and rebuke. 
That's how we grow. We grow by instructions, corrections, and rebuke. You don't have to expose yourself to a multiple of influence. So I leave you with a question. Are you the brother at Corinth in this church? Or are you the sister in Corinth at, in this church? Are you exposed to multiple influences? Or you are listening to a single influence? Because at the end of the day, we must hear the same things. We must speak the same things. We must mind the same things. That's the local church. Are you blessed?